Hi there, my name is Mike Bankhead. I am your host. I am the bass player and songwriter from the Gem City, Dayton, Ohio. Today, I welcome the very talented lyricist and songwriter Joe Augustine, who performs as Achilles Tenderloin, but he'll tell you that. I think you're going to like this one today on... The You Could Be My Aramis podcast. And also, Joe is the first guest to play a song live on this podcast. Stick around for that. Here comes the conversation. Hey, Joe. Hi, Mike. That's a song. Hey, Joe. Oh, <laughs> it, it is. It is. It is. When, when, when I'm... When I myself was a bass player, that was one of my favorite bass lines to play. The wow! I you remember it? Got that on the first try. <laughs> All right. So I didn't know that you used to be a bass player, so that's where I have to start. Why are you no longer a bass player? Ah, you know, I just um, when I got more comfortable with the car, when the guitar with the guitar, that became my main songwriting tool, and most of you know, for me, it's mostly the songwriting. So I just, I don't do enough uh, multi-track recording to keep my bass chops up. Yeah, you can always get someone else to do that if you have to, right? Yeah, you know, I have I have some people doing it for me recently on the album. Uh, Brian Hoflick is doing some upright bass. And, oh, nice. Um, Pat Himes is doing some electric bass, not at the same time. Kate Cello's got, Kate Wakefield has got some cello stuff going on in there too, so that's a little bassy. I noticed on uh, I just blanked out on the name of the song. Hang on, we'll get it. On um, Blue Silhouettes, I detected some yeah. nice woody, low resonant cello, and I was thinking, oh, I wonder if he got Kate. Oh yeah. <laughs> Nice. So people who have just tuned in, we haven't really said who you are, or what you do, and we just jumped right into the conversation, so I'm sure people are confused. How about you officially introduce yourself and, and then chuck out your elevator pitch? Uh, my, uh, my name is Joe Augustine. I perform and record as Achilles Tenderloin, um, and I do other music-adjacent things as... Augustine Live Music Solutions. It's ALMS. Very nice. You are based in neighboring Richmond, Indiana, are you not? I am. Yeah, Richmond, Indiana. It's right on the state line where 35 meets I-70 and 27 and 40. I'm on, I'm on all the roads, Mike. You're close enough to us that I, I think Dayton has warmly embraced you as someone that's around here all the time. Oh, well, thank you. I'm glad glad to hear that that everybody else that somebody else feels that way about it too because I I feel very welcomed and well treated over there. It's a, it's a great city. I'm always bragging about the uh, the community and the way that you all support each other so well out there. You've mentioned that you write principally on the guitar, so I don't have to ask you that question. That's one I ask everybody, what's your main songwriting tool? Instead, let's go back to how did you get started writing songs? When did you go from playing other people's music to deciding to make your own? Mm. Well, uh, almost as soon as I started playing, I was kind of waiting for that. Uh, my, my sister, um, well, my siblings are all, there's kind of an age gap. Um, the baby by by a long shot. Uh, the the youngest of us is eleven years older than I am, and all the way up to fifteen years older. So my sister was a songwriter when I was little, and my brother was a slam poet in Indianapolis when I was little. And I, I already had those uh, influences by the time I was ready to start doing my own. That's pretty cool. When you start to write, is is the guitar the first thing you reach for, or do you reach for your stash of lyrics first? Mm. Uh, the lyrics, uh, the lyrics 
really drive the songwriting. I, I do occasionally, you know, I'll go through periods of time when I just grab the guitar a lot and make sure that I always have the guitar in my hands, you know, and I'll maybe put on a movie on the projector on silent or, you know, just hang out on the couch with the cat and play for a while. Sometimes I'll, sometimes the song inspiration will come from that, but more often than not, I'm playing around until I find something that, you know, that I say, oh, well, that would go well with these lyrics I've been kicking around in my head for a while. And you seem to do this uh, an awful lot, the writing and the playing. Just from following you on social media, it seems you're doing something show-wise just about every week. In fact, aren't you on your way to play one today? Yeah, yep, yeah. Uh, uh, Mr. Mariah's here. Uh, Midnight Breakfast is here, too, but she's not coming with us. Um, but Mr. Mariah's here with me, and we're going to head down to Lexington, Kentucky to play at Al's Bar with uh, Sad Black Lab and Tristan Brooke. That sounds like fun. By the time this goes up, that will have already happened because this is going up next week. But this is, uh, we're having this conversation on Saturday, June 18th. And yeah, getting out there and taking your music to the people, doing, doing the thing. Oh, yeah. It, it's, yeah, it's important. Well, well, and now, you know, um, on this coming Tuesday, I'm going to have some new singles coming out. And so we'll be, playing a whole bunch of shows in a row, just kind of directly in support of that. Let's talk about that. First of all, I'm glad that you realized that Tuesday is the right and proper day to release music like it was in our youth. Um, of course. Of course. I, I really want to fight it's back against... solstice. But... I did not realize that. And yes, the 21st, it would be. Which means that the days are going to start getting shorter after Tuesday, and we're headed back to winter. Ah, uh, yes, that is true. I like winter, so though. The, the longest possible day for, for the new songs. You're releasing, if I'm not mistaken, two new songs on the 21st, Blue Silhouettes and Don't Be Long, correct? That's right, yes. Would you like, first of all, would you like me to drop either one of those songs into the track and play them for the listeners? Oh, Mike, that would be awesome. All right. This this podcast is probably going up on Wednesday. So, dear listener, this song is already available over on Joe's Bandcamp page. But in case you didn't know that, why don't you take a listen right now to Blue Silhouettes. The curve of your arm is the comfort I crave. My blow, my castaway crush. How weather the storm in taverns and caves while I covered the warmth of your touch Hang on to your heart I'll carry mine Let none of us run when we're called Crawl through my window Some slow summer night And throw blue silhouette
All right, Joe. Uh, tell the people about that song. We just heard Blue Silhouettes. Ah, blue Silhouettes. Well, the, as you can see, it has themes of summer, themes of longing, um, but it's also supposed to be kind of a tempestuous, um, sort of a, almost like a storm at sea kind of feeling. Going, shifting between uh, the calm before the storm and the storm. In terms of uh, how how the song built up in the studio, like I, I kind of wanted all of those things to happen, but they they happened even better and bigger than that I had dreamed they could. Starting with uh, with Brian Hoflick on percussion, you know. And, uh, I talked to him about the song and about where I wanted to go and about the kind of like sea shanty elements of it. And he just took that and really ran with it in a way that was so cool. Um, did a lot of layering of uh, kind of trying to create some timpani-like timpani noises and some uh, marching drums. And it was perfect, very stormy. And that we were able to build on that foundation when uh, when Kate came in with the cello and we got Anna P.S. from Goshen, Indiana on the flute. And it was just, it grew really organically. And I think the last thing we added was uh, we had Aaron Nell add some penny whistle and uh, Mr. Mariah uh, Mo Lawson came in and um, added some tremolo mandolin and and he and Kate both uh, did um, some beautiful backing vocals, which I'm sure you heard in there, especially at the end. Yep. I feel like that's something that's pretty common for those of us who go record with Patrick at Real Love. Like, we have an idea of what we want the song to be, and it tends to come out better than we thought it would. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I loved it. And Kate, Kate called it too. Like I didn't quite see it getting as big an orchestral as it did, but when we were in the studio doing her cello stuff, she said, oh, you know, I see this going almost in kind of like a neutral milk hotel kind of direction with that, you know, that big like elephant six sound. See, I, I generally think of your music as not being quite as loud as say neutral milk hotel. Usually <laughs> it, is that, that's it's kind of a new direction for you. No. Uh, it's gone back and forth. Um, my my style has changed some over the years. Uh, longer ago, um, yeah, I could have been more easily kind of lumped in with maybe Neutral Milk Hotel or artists like I don't know if you're familiar with Possessed by Paul James out of out of Texas. I am not. So a long time ago, it was it was more common for me to be compared with those arts. You know, I mean, really, when I was Growing up writing songs, a lot of my favorites were, um, you know, and I was into indie rock stuff like Ani DeFranco and that kind of thing, but also I, I loved punk, loved grunge, um, a lot of hard rock stuff. And so I had a lot of big expressionist stuff going on in my onstage manner for a long time. It still comes out sometimes. Maybe you've mellowed just a little bit with age. Mm -hmm. Could be. Well, you know, I also found, also found some uh, other musical um, musical influences that were more mellow. I mean, you know, and there were always some like that. You know, there was always you know Bob Dylan and Joni Mitchell, and later Fiona Apple and that kind of thing. And you know, when I would when I would listen to Last Splash, you know, one of my favorite tracks on there was uh, Driving on Nine, which was kind of a little bulky tune there, but um, it was uh, when uh, when it really crept into my own songwriting was in college when a, a friend of mine introduced me to Skip James and made me really uh, rethink and want to go in a direction that was kind of more slow and haunting and intimate. And I didn't feel like I had to be yelling all the time. <laughs> well, really, that makes sense with the amount of emphasis that you place on carefully constructing your lyrics. 
if you're going to work that hard on your lyrics and you said that they come first, well, you're going to want to make sure people can hear them, right? Yes, absolutely. I'd like to play for the people now the uh, second of the two songs that you released yesterday. Uh, this is the second one that went up yesterday, Don't Be Long. I'm going to the city to sell my song. I'm going to the city. I won't be long, don't be long. Just follow the stream to the railroad track. Follow this dream to the city and back. But I'd rather be kiss, 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 kiss than you. Squeeze three dollars from the four I spent Don't be alone Rather sing underneath your tree Maybe you'll share your peaches with me I'd rather be kiss, 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 kiss and you you like the listeners to take away from don't be long well i mean first first of all you know this is another summer song like don't be long but i mean like blue silhouettes but um i don't know kind of the other side of the coin it's more of a you know, idyllic woodsy folky kind of summer tune you know talking about uh eating peaches and you know walking along the stream to get to the railroad tracks. For me, you know, I think a lot about, well, I mean, some of the more obvious you know, tropes, you know, I think about traveling to bigger cities than where I live here in, in Richmond and you know, just trying to get my music out there. That tension between uh, wanting to do that and make those connections, but also, um, you know, when it's, when it's summertime and the weather's nice, and you know, the and some of the people are a little less busy, or at least they're busy doing stuff that's a little more fun. Yeah, and I do do miss home a little bit sometimes too, and the people who are there. My cat. <laughs> um, don't worry, I'm not. It's not a song about kissing my cat. Yes, those are the. The main themes of that one, really. More straightforward, I guess, than Blue Silhouettes. A little less on the... A little less metaphor. 
and these two. One oh, of, go ahead. Sorry. Hmm. Oh, well, also, I don't really have a lot of. Uh, I don't have a lot of like love songs or romantic songs. That's about as close as I get in "Don't Be Long." Is there a particular reason for that? Hmm. No, it just it felt right. I mean, I think that that contributed to me um, really pursuing that song when I when I did find it when I uh, when it started developing. I really wanted to make sure that I continued to develop it and get it to where it was usable. It took a long time; it took uh, years before I felt like it was ready. I feel like it kind of fills a hole in the uh, the breadth of content that I have to offer as a songwriter. And these two songs are just part of a of a bigger project. Do you want to talk about the bigger project? Oh yeah, yep, yeah. Uh, these are both from a forthcoming album called Tincture for Trouble, and of course uh, Patrick Patrick Himes at Real Love is producing all of these. Uh, the album will be waiting a little bit longer for that. Uh, probably wrap recording sometime in September, but I don't expect to release the full album until closer to March, um, when I'll be having my 40th birthday. And it will also be uh, near another uh, major astrological event, the uh, Vernal Equinox. You mentioned that the name of the album is Tincture for Trouble. Yes. I like how you came at that. You posted on your Facebook page a few options, and you kind of let the people uh, pick. And that was the overwhelming choice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What gave you the idea to let the people pick? Bounds. I was, I was swimming. Like I, I, I did not expect to find out that the. Um, the working title for the album that I've had in mind for probably five or six years um, over that course of five or six years has gone from unused to widely used and more than one person even um, had the same sort of uh, album art concepts and stuff to go with that so I realized I before I go much further with this project it needs a new name <laughs> You know, before I start, uh, you know, talking to talking to folks like uh, Mike Bankhead, you know, I need to have a new title. <laughs> so, instead of just deciding for yourself, which is like, which is a fantastic way to get your audience involved, you gave us all. I say us because I follow your page and I voted in that poll too, right? He, he gave us all a handful of options and said, "Hey, folks, uh, which one? Which one do you like the best?" And I and I think it worked well. I think that, uh, that generally speaking, most people picked the one that I, when it was all said and done, I I agreed. I agreed that that was the best choice. Uh, the. Uh, the second most popular choice was Wine Dark Ocean, which I also really like. Um, but it's, but that is a borrowed phrase from uh, from Homer and from uh, Greek epic poetry in general. They didn't really, uh, they didn't really have a way to talk about the color um, blue, like the sea. So. Wine dark was the adjective that they would use to to describe the way that the ocean looked. Come for the music, stay for the ancient Greek history lesson. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad he went with tincture for trouble because that's the one that I voted for. But first of all, tincture is not a word that is used all that often, and the Poet me is like, yeah, but like it's alliterative, it's specific, it could be any number of things. And in order to find out what the thing is, you're gonna have to listen to the song that that phrase shows up in to figure it out. I, yeah, I, I dig it. Well, thank you. 
I'm glad you did. And I'm glad, I'm glad I picked the one you voted for, too. Yeah, I mean, I would have bought the Ailbub anyway. No, I'm not, definitely not mad. <laughs> so, this entire conversation, you've been holding your guitar, and I would like to have that not be in vain. So, uh, I'd like you to be the actual, the first person on this podcast to play a song live on the podcast. Never, I've never asked anyone to do that. Never even Me? thought about it. Uh, yeah. Let's. You're the guinea pig. Let's let's see. Uh, let's see what we got. Okay. Is is it all right with you if I? Uh, let's see. I'll I'll pick one that is going on the album, but that is not one of the singles I'm releasing on Tuesday, June twenty first. Cool. So it's an exclusive song. Torch song. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Torch song. Yeah. And. Uh, on the album, it'll have uh, Brian Hoflick on drums and Aaron Nell on mute trumpet, but... Here I am doing it all by myself. I torch the steely dross of all we had Forge a shield embossed with tales of woe. The fortunes we have lost to Cupid's bow, but I want you so bad. Let's get sad. I salvage scraps of heartache and abuse Now I'm down to the bottle, caps and screws Crush me for the crucible in you Let fire make me new Resisted the urge to say stuff like trumpet solo. Um, <laughs> just leave it to the imagination. But um, that kind of swings. I don't think. Oh yeah, th thank you. Thanks. Oh, yeah. And and that 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 is a fun one. You know, it um, brings back brings back memories of my my bass playing days for one thing. You know, you know, and I I think I think it would be cool to. To hear you play it sometime, either with me or or otherwise, you know. I'm pretty sure we could make that happen. Yeah. How do the people find you? This is the part where we're gonna promote the world of Joe Augustine slash Achilles Tenderloin. Ah, yeah. I I just rebuilt my dot com from scratch for the first time in I haven't had an active website in probably six years. I'm not doing a lot on there in terms of blogging and that kind of thing, but it at least works now and has current stuff on it. AchillesTenderloin.com. And uh, yeah, so you can go there. I'm also on Facebook under Achilles Tenderloin and Instagram. Again, Achilles Tenderloin. 
Bandcamp, Achilles Tenderloin dot bandcamp dot com. And if you go there right now, you'll still find some old stuff, including my uh my twenty fourteen release that I recorded in Dayton at Street Sounds with uh Chris Yakopsik behind the mixing board. Um Stronger Than Wine was the name of that one. But the new stuff will be on the landing page there Tuesday. This coming Tuesday. Well, I, I guess yesterday when this episode airs. This episode's airing on yesterday. Wednesday, the twenty second. As of, yeah, you can already you can already get it on Bandcamp. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> yes, and I encourage people go listen to the. Well, you've already heard the two songs on on this podcast. Rewind and listen again, or. And go to Joe's Bandcamp page, AchillesTenderloin.bandcamp.com. Listen there, and if you like it, pay him some money for the songs. We independent oh, musicians yes, um, like it when people give us money for our songs, right? We do, we do. And and if you catch me at a live show, I am I I have like two of these right now, but I will have more of them by the time I come play in Dayton again on. July 14th at Yellow Cab with Anna P.S. for uh, Windsor Knotts' uh, the Thursday Songwriter Showcase at Yellow Cab. What you just held up to the camera, because I don't publish the video for these, I'm going to give it to you, though. Oh, yes. <laughs> you held, No, it's cool. i got to describe it now. You held up a compact disc with, with two songs and a delightful I, picture of you I playing did. guitar. Oh. Yes, thank you. The photograph was by... Jen Hunter, by the way, taken at Vagabond Studio and Gallery at uh, Front Street Studios in, in Dayton. So one thing we have in common, other than, you know, liking bass lines, is trying to build a sense of community around music when we can. That's something that I strongly believe in. And I have observed that you seem to know every musician within like 100 miles of here. <laughs> It, it, I mean, it, that might be that might be uh, hyperbole, but at least all of the solo songwritery types, because I see that you do shows with a lot of them. So how did you manage to do that? And I kind of like to hear you talk about what it means to you to collaborate with all of these interesting people, even if it's swapping shows or going on a brief tour together. Well, I mean, first of all, it feels feels really good. There's uh, honestly nothing I like better, so it's a uh, it's a good thing I get to do so much of it. But I, you know, most of these are musicians that I've just met over the years by you know traveling around and playing songwriter showcases. And um, for a long time, I did a lot of open mics, a lot of open mic nights, and hosted some too. And and I also host some. Uh, songwriter nights and concert series and stuff like that on my own. So there's, uh, it's been a very had a lot, a lot of opportunities to meet people who are out there doing the doing the music thing. You know, and that's uh, I just make sure that those those of them that seem like people I I want to work with and be friends with that you know that I do what I can to make that happen. That's pretty cool and altruistic. Uh speaking of altruism, you also volunteered a whole lot of time at Sideshow this year. Uh making sure everyone in the little room sounded good. Tell me about that experience. Hmm. That was that was really cool. Whew. I was I was a little ragged by by the end of the second day, but um, and and I and I can't believe that I that I failed to mention that in um, one of the ways to get out and you know meet people in music communities. Volunteering, especially volunteering at festivals. I, on, honestly, yeah, a, a lot of um, a lot of my favorite people in Dayton I met um, volunteering at. Sideshow and Lady Fest Dayton and other events like that over the years. It's a really great way to, and 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 not just to meet um, musical and artistic people in general, but to meet musical and artistic people who care about 
the music and art community that they're in. And, you know, you already know that the people you meet there fit that bill and are, they want to help. Yeah. Uh, for any listeners that are not from Dayton or might not be aware of what Sideshow is, that is a festival that we have in Dayton every year at Yellow Cap Tavern. It's two days. There are, there's two outdoor stages and an indoor stage. It's free to the community. And all of the musicians who play the festival, as part of the deal for playing, you get to volunteer some of your time to give back to the community. And they, if you think about a festival, there's a whole lot of jobs that need to be done. Someone needs to check IDs. Someone needs to give beer to thirsty people. Someone needs to make sure that everybody's safe. Somebody needs to run the sound. Somebody needs to make sure that traffic isn't going where they're not supposed to go, where musicians load in. So those of us who wish to play the festival, we sign up for a volunteer shift. Or in the case of Joe, we run sound in the indoor stage for two consecutive days. <laughs> nonstop. Yeah. Woo. Mm-hmm. You know, and and I and I had I had other volunteers kind of helping me out, you know, so that I was able to um, take bathroom breaks and also rely on them to you know help me, you know, because e- e- even in, even if it's all happening in one room, you know, there are a lot of times when you can't be everywhere at once. You know, you need somebody, you know, working the working the board while you're setting up mic stands and vice versa. And also, just the diversity of musicians in that little room has to be a challenge to get good sound. I mean, look, I showed up with a bass. Somebody else showed up with a flute. There's a lot of people that show up with acoustic guitars. There was, oh, I forget the name of the of the group. It was Sharon Lane and Phyllis Turner and another lady, but they had like three harmony vocals and a piano. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, 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 the Areola Choir. That's it, the Areola Choir. But, like, trying to dial in the sound for three sets of harmony vocals and a piano, and then, like, you know, an acoustic guitar, and then a flute, and then a bass, and that's got to be a massive challenge. It is, and, and you know, thank, thank, thank you for noticing, um, honestly, it, it's, uh, this, this might be surprising, but it's not, it's not super easy to get me to um, kind of toot my own horn, but... That is a skill set that I've spent a long time developing, you know, just by, you know, over the years running countless um, open mics and um, songwriter rounds where you're um, doing fly for doing sound for a variety of people on the fly, you know, and it's, uh, you know, it helps you um, to, to know some things that you maybe can expect with like different kinds of instruments and stuff are, that are coming up. But honestly, the main thing you get out of it is learning to be on your toes and think on your feet and um, be, be ready for the stuff you're not ready for. It's perfectly okay to be proud of your work that day. Uh, I don't have that skill set. And I was, you know, I was in there enjoying a bunch of the artists and yeah, I totally noticed it's like, Oh yeah. The, the, Everybody in here, we all sound different, and we're all bringing different things to the table. And you're just trying to make us all sound good. And that's all true. Like, there's nothing in it for to, for you other than the satisfaction, right? I mean, other than the satisfaction of doing a cool thing, there's not really much in it for you. A lot of hard work and being tired, but absolutely, yeah. That and and you know, just getting to become connected and stay connected with a such a great group of people. I I I got I got to hear you live for the first time. We we had met before and I had heard some of your music online but we had never we had never talked. You know, I, I mean I'm sorry, we had never we had never been in a room where I could see you do your music in person and that yep. was a really great experience too. I'm, I'm glad you were there for that. I like I like playing that little room. I broke out a couple of new songs, and one of them was kind of half a disaster because I forgot the words. But, you know, it was a cool... I've always wanted to play Sideshow. That was my first time being invited to play there, and it was a really cool community experience. And, I mean, 
I heard everything perfectly fine, and I'm sure the audience did too, which again, I'm, I'm the dude bringing a bass. It's probably not the easiest thing to mix, especially with my voice in there. So I appreciate you being there and, and putting in the effort. Remember, folks, those two songs I played on this podcast were out yesterday. Go to the Achilles Tenderloin Bandcamp page and uh, listen to them. Thanks, Joe. I appreciate it. Um, th- thank you, Mike. I just realized nobody could see me waving, but 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 good goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Thanks again to Joe for taking the time to talk to me. Thank you, dear listener, for being here. And hey, definitely do swing by his Bandcamp page. And if you like those two songs you heard, why not spend some money and get high quality downloads of those? Uh, we independent musicians really appreciate when you do that. I know that Brandon Barry's episode was supposed to be up last Friday, but now it's coming your way this Friday. So come on back Friday and uh, you'll get the chance to, to hear Brandon Barry talk. Bye.